Yo, welcome back, everybody. It's patch day. No gameplay video today. We're going to rapid fire our way through these patch notes. We got ourselves a substantial patch. On Tuesday, they released this image. Blizzard did. Indicating that we got ourselves a big change upcoming. Well, it's already in. Today, by the time this video goes live, the patch should be deploying. If you're on mobile, you might have a couple hours delay. But without any further ado, let's jump through these things real quick. Three minions leaving. Kindly Grandmother, Beast Tavern 1, Sly Raptor, Beast Tavern 4, and Gentle Genie, Elemental Tavern 5, gone. And in their place, coming back, Mana Saber, Tavern 1, Beast, Rat Pack, Tavern 3, Beast, Tavern 4, Beast, it depends on which Rat Pack they bring back. And Little Rag, what's going to be on Tavern 4 with, you know, the changes, and they're redistributing a couple of the minions around. We'll get to that one later with the actual card text for it. Coming back in its place. Rylek getting a quality of life improvement. Instead of it triggering just the minion to the left of it, it now triggers either left or right so adjacent minion it will not trigger both and if you have a minion on both sides it's going to randomly pick one of the two this is probably done to uh let's just say alleviate the i didn't read the patch notes issue with rylek the number of people that played this with like the wrong side battle cry was uh was high we've seen it all over the place on ladder it's also kind of nice for like say for example playing position one rylek so you can trigger it before like you get cleaved or something Positioning with uh, Macaw and a couple other niche type of usages. Still, Rylek is significantly nerfed from where it was a couple patches ago. If you missed that, basically being half of its former self. Now just the slight quality of life improvement. Pokey! Maybe the winner of the biggest nerf in the patch notes. Pokey taking a huge hit. This card was super oppressive at lower MMR ranges. Got a little bit more balance as you went up, but still. Like, Pokey high rolls or Pokey high rolls, they're free wins. Now a start of turn effect instead of an end of turn effect. Huge because it doesn't stack with Drakari anymore, so you can't do double end of turn effects, triple end of turn effects, and also the fact that just over the course of the game, this is going to be one one less in each combat because you don't have to wait till the after the first combat to even see the first impact of the card. It slows it down tremendously. A lot of these changes are going to be like not as cool as the Pokey change. There's a lot of like micro tweaks. We'll go through those quickly. Party Elemental gaining an extra one attack on every Elemental played. Also, losing one attack itself. Dead Stomper, changing its baseline stats a little bit. Gaining some, some baseline health, helping it out. Plays around Zap a little better. Gives it more power in the middle of the game. Lastomatic, losing a little bit of attack. Like, we're not going to go through extensive analysis over here. Like, what's the impact of Lastomatic losing two attack? It's worse early in the game. I think we all know this. <laughs> it's probably the same impact over the course of the game. It just needs to get a little bit of attack back. We don't pick this card because it's like, oh my god, it has nine attack. We pick it because the effect is amazing. Scrap Scraper getting absolutely gutted. Scrap Scraper, a five-star mask or a six-star mask rating as a five-star. Yeah, that wasn't okay. Making mechs the best battle cry tribe in the game was a little bit too much. Beatboxer stacking gigantic infinite gold compositions. Uh yeah, we're gonna need to nerf that one a little bit. Still possible, still playable with like uh Baron type builds. Still really, really, really good, but doesn't allow you to you repeatedly trigger it using spells, using uh, hero powers to trigger the battle cry over and over to stack those magnetics. Substantial nerf. But hey, it gained an attack. That makes up for it. <laughs> Chimera being nerfed to only trigger twice per combat instead of three times. One of the highest play impact cards ever added to the game. When you got this card early in the game, it was just a free ticket to level to six. That snowball is incredibly oppressive. Nerfing the top end of that snowball makes a lot of sense. So you still get a lot of stats off of it, but you can't get those three times per combats. Taunting it up is a little bit less impactful. A lot of little, little tweaks here. This is a good nerf to a, a very impactful card. Coomer, losing a couple baseline stats. Seafarer, maybe the, should receive the reward for the, the sleeper change to the game. I think this is going to be really impactful, especially at high MMR. Because, uh, yeah... Only having to play three cards to get a tavern spell is significantly better than playing four cards or buying four cards, I should say. We can cycle a lot of cards and generate a lot of value. And uh, there are some really, really, really impactful tavern spells on tavern five. This card is going to be a snap pick as long as you have some health because it, the return on investment, the timeline to actually get gold back from this is like way, way faster with three cards instead of four cards. Not to mention, like, APM lines are already strong as they are at the moment. Probably didn't need buff, to be honest. But we'll see about this impact. Gunpowder Courier getting buffed to only after you spend 4 gold instead of 5 gold. Losing a base attack in the process. Sister Death Whisper being redesigned to trigger on all of your minions. Not just undead. Say that again. 
Death Whisper effect is on all of your minions. The 1-3 buff can be used to buff Baron and Undead comps now. Woo! Zap protection. It gives you the ability to, to buff those tech cards, like, say, for example, Leroy's or, or uh, Drakari at the end of the turn effects if you're going to play with uh, Kel'Thuzad or whatever it might be. But it also makes this card really good for, like, Menagerie mid-game builds. You triple in a Death Whisper and you have at least, like, one or two Reborns on the board, yeah, you can always pick it up. It can be kept around for a little bit until you figure out what your direction is going to be. And then just drop the card, right? Makes it much, much, much more useful in a variety of situations. Trigor. Wait, where's the image? <laughs> Trigor getting buffed over here to 1-1 one, one whenever a beast gets, or its buff goes to 1-1 one, one instead of just 1 health whenever a beast takes damage. Holy cow. I know beasts are bad. Beasts are almost universally referred to as the worst tribe in the game right now. They definitely need some buffs. Or at least like, the, you know, the buffing version of beasts. The bluebird, hydra, whatever type of line. But that's a lot of stats. It wasn't uncommon to get 200, 300 health Tragors in the past, but it was pretty balanced because, like, you couldn't get any attack on them. You had to play, like, a tree or something to make them even remotely threatening. Now they just passively get big. A couple Trigors in the middle of the game, and suddenly you're a very, very murderous-looking board. Pair that with the fact that Bluebird is now 1-2 per beast that gets gets uh, damaged. And suddenly those beast boards are getting bigger a lot faster. Self-damage effects or death rattle minions, and suddenly this board is huge. What do you do from that position? Big question mark. Because big beast doesn't typically win out games. That should be like a free path to just level to six and look for a transition turn. Maybe do gold rune pivots. Maybe, who knows? Honestly, who knows? This is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stats. But it relies upon finding the right synergy minions early in the game. And the games just aren't infinitely long, right? We'll see how well this one goes. But I have a feeling this might be a little bit oppressive at certain MMR ranges. And uh, I guess we'll just wait and see. We'll just wait and see. I'm suspicious of these changes there for beasts. Murky. Holy moly. Murky got redesigned again. Was this the third time this card's been changed? Give a friendly Murloc. Or there's a battle cry effect changing. Give a friendly Murloc plus 4-4 four, four for each one you control. So you could have upwards of six or seven, including itself, Murlocs on the board. Or Bran plus that effect with like five or six Murlocs on the board. Hmm. End of turn effects triggering with Murkai. You just casually get in 40-40s at the end of the turn per Murky? 80-80 at the end of the turn with Golden Murky? Hmm. I can see Murloc buffing being good again. Just remember the one patch that we had with the original, or I don't know which version of Murky it was. One of the early ones where the buff kept getting bigger for every Murloc that you played. And we just had gigantic end of turn buffing Murlocs board. This is going to be a kind of a very similar type of effect. It won't have the same top end, but like it'll be bigger faster, which might be just be end up being better. Hungry Abomination gaining an extra health every time a minion dies. I think these are interesting changes here because like these cards were still playable. They just weren't really meta, you know? Like, these weren't the most OP tribes, which is probably a good change. Like, you give devs credit where they're like, okay, let's just nudge pirates, nudge undead, nudge whatever a little bit better because they were somewhat playable in certain scenarios, but these cards were underplayed. That's a substantial change. Abomination gaining a couple extra health each turn, or a couple dozen extra health in the impactful turns, or a couple hundred extra health over the course of a game. Yeah, yeah, I can see that being a big deal. Instead of there being a 100, 200, you know, 100, 100, whatever abomination on the board, it's 100, 200. And that thing trades one or two extra minions. Molten Rock gaining in health, basically the same impact, you know? Oh boy, now Molten Rock is nasty. All right, well, it just gained health, let's be real. Frostling, gaining an extra attack, but going to Tavern 5, making room for Little Rag is back and down on Tavern 4. In case you guys don't remember Little Rag, after you play an elemental, give a friendly minion stats equal to the elemental's tier didn't get the uh, party elemental treatment. I feel like it should have gotten the party elemental treatment where it didn't buff the minion that you're cycling through. Yeah, back to being infuriated by I bought it elemental, I played it, little rag buff the minion that I'm then selling and I got nothing for the card. <laughs> oh well, it is what it is, but this is going to give elementals extra scaling in the middle of the game. We already have a lot of really good elemental lines that exist. As long as Lubber and Recycling Wraith exist in the game... Uh, putting scaling on elementals on low tavern tier might be a problem. I don't know. I'm, I'm a little worried on this one. But we shall see when it gets implemented. Roaring Rallyer losing one of its health on its buff. Big deal. But it gained one health itself. It stole it for itself. Selfish Rallyer. 
But this card was really oppressive in the middle of the game, caused a lot of those 10 damage swings. Nerfed version of itself, Amber Guardian getting basically fundamentally redesigned. Holy moly, up to Tavern 5? Yeah, that's going to nerf that, that Glass Cannon Dragon's board, right? The I stay on Tavern 4 forever, build Divine Shield across the board, tons of attack using Nightbane. Nope, can't do that anymore. Unless you go triple into Amber Guardian, you are not going to be able to stay on Tavern 4 because you really need to get this thing rolling in the middle of the game so you build turn after turn after turn all of your Divine Shields. And the side note, it is now a Tavern 5 minion instead of Tavern 4, so you can't use the 5-star spell to gold it automatically either. So, like, you've got to get these guys relatively early to play those kind of lines. It's definitely a nerf to the big, the big mid-game dragon board. Hooktail taking a baseline stat loss. Trickster gaining an attack. Oozling gaining an attack. There's Oozling. Wrathweaver gaining its health back. I guess that nerf was unsuccessful, huh? Backstage security being redesigned to battle cry deal one damage to your hero huge shutterwalk hero power buff another battle cry on tavern one <laughs> all jokes aside yeah that's a much better minion much much better than a lot of the bad minions on tavern one if this wins around where you would lose you gain effective health even though you lost one when you played it not losing four or five three whatever health in the beginning portion of the game when you you lose the combat makes up for that little bit of a loss fire dancer gaining a couple stats shipwright Gaining health permanently whenever it gains attack. So, like, if you buff it in the middle of combat, it gets to keep health. There's obvious synergies with pirates that exist there. Hero powers like Drek'thar or Deathwing make a ton of sense. Honestly, it just makes the card much, 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 much more tempting to pick up in the middle of the game. Which is, well, a big deal. Fellblood taking a baseline stat loss. Not changing its text, so this card is still going to be very apparent. Underhanded Dealer gaining a couple stats. Bream Counter getting back its its old effect. Bream Counter pretty much went from being one of the best cards in the game to not played at all nowadays. When they remove quests, they move Primal Fin up to Tavern 5. They basically gutted Murloc. So these are going to be a nice little couple changes to try to pull Murlocs back in line. Begurgle going to Tavern 4 instead of Tavern 5, but losing 1-1 one, one off of its buff. Conk going to Tavern 4. You can see where this is going. Like a lot of small tweaks to Murlocs to make them a little more tempting. Dreamer's Embrace going to Tavern 5. Nerfs to the mid-game ta stay on Tavern 4 lines. The uh, infinite lines that exist out there. Scavenger Parts, shockingly getting nerfed. Gold positive card that generates minions was almost universally picked whenever you saw this thing. Plunder Seeker losing one steel per, per usage. It used to be trigger once plus number of pirates. Now it's just trigger for number of pirates. And Duo is getting a couple changes here. I'm not really a Duo streamer. We'll go through it real quick. Orchestra Conductor gaining a couple, uh, gaining a stat on the buff. Minari Messenger gaining a couple base stats, but going to Tavern 5. Done. <laughs> that was the duo section. All right, rapid fire all the way through this. That didn't take forever to go through these patch. By the time this goes live, like we said, patch is in. Might be a little bit of a delay if you're on mobile devices. We'll be starting upstream very shortly after this patch goes live as well. Time to uh, learn a new meta. These are going to be some substantial changes. Beasts come back a little bit. Some substantial nerfs to like the mid-game dragon lines. Still a lot of the, you know, the cheesy stuff still exists in the game. We're going we're gonna to have to see how it shakes out. Should be fun. Good changes overall. A lot of healthy buffs to weak things, nerfs to strong things. Bring balance a little bit. A little bit back in line. All right, guys. Good luck out there. Have a great time. And I'll see you again tomorrow for gameplay for the new patch. Peace.